Hi guys, let's have a fresh look at the binomial distribution with particular emphasis today on the median and the mode. And we haven't talked about those at all, really, uh, when we've been talking about the binomial distribution. So it would be a very uh, interesting thing to do because it can be confusing for people when they come across questions asking for the median and the mode when they haven't really thought about it before. So they are featuring in this little session which we're going to have a go at today. All right, let's go. Now, I cooked up a little problem for you. It's about the probability that it will rain in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia on any day in August. And apparently, <laughs> according to Wolfman, this probability is independent of any other day and has been found from weather data to be 0.15. Okay, that's the probability that it's going to rain on any day in August. Now, over a seven-day period, uh, during August in Melbourne, find the following. Okay, A, the expected number of rainy days, no problem. B, the median mm, mm, number of rainy days, a problem. C, the modal number of, day, of rainy days, mm, definitely a problem. D, the standard deviation of rainy days in Melbourne, no problem at all, according to the formulas which we've already learned. And E, the probability that the number of rainy days falls within two standard deviations from the mean. All right, now, come on, your job now is to pause this video and to have a shot at it, okay? Because you'll learn twice as much if you have a go at it first before I start telling you what to do. So I'll see you soon, all right? Okay, you're back. Right, let's go with this, okay? Now, uh, the expected number of rainy days. Well, as you know, uh, for a binomial distribution, there is a nice, convenient little formula for the expected number. So if we let x equal the number of rainy days, I always start with that statement. It sort of grounds me and helps me think about what I'm doing. We know that x follows. Now, watch this terminology, guys. Watch this. This says that x follows, that means follows, a, bina a binomial distribution this first number in the bracket is n, and the second number is p. Okay, so n is 7 for 7 days, 7 trials, 7 individual days, and p is the probability that it's going to rain on any one of those days. So that's the probability of quote-unquote success, if you like, if you can call a rainy day success. Um, all right, so let's uh, having established that, we know that, yes, that's n, and yes, that's p, and that the expected value of rainy days... Uh, is mu, it's another name for it, or the average, and it's equal to n times p for a binomial distribution, and only for a binomial distribution, okay? So that's 7 times 0.15, which gets us 1.05 rainy days. And it's okay, guys, to have a non-whole number answer here, okay? It's fine, it's just an average, right? It's an average. So don't get all worried about the fact that you should be quoting 1 or 2 or something like that. It's not like that for expected values. Okay, now the median. This is a knotty one, isn't it? The median does not have a convenient formula like the expected value of x uh, or the variance of x for the binomial distribution. Okay, it doesn't. We haven't, that's why we haven't quoted it. So however, guys, however, because the binomial distribution is an example of a discrete random variable distribution, which it is, guys, we can generate a table, as we've been used to doing for the general case of discrete random variable distributions. We can generate a table in this case as well, showing the distribution of probabilities. Showing the distribution of probabilities, ladies and gentlemen, and then we can find the medium in median, I mean, in the usual manner for discrete random variable distributions. Not convinced? Let me show you. Now we know that the probability that x equals 0, according to our marvellous formula which we use for the binomial, would be 7c0 times the probability of success to the 0 times the probability of not success to the uh, 7 minus 0, which is 7. Now, what does that come to? OK, I'm doing them to four decimal places for you. That apparently comes to 0 0.3206, all right? Now, we have to do each of these right up to and including 7 to be able to generate a nice little table of values. Now, you get this, don't you? The probability that x equals 1, same thing as up here, except we're putting 1 
for the value of x. So 7c1, 0 0.15 to the 1, 0 0.85 to the 7 minus 1, which is 6. And what does that come to? 0 0.3960. Similarly, for x equals 2, you know what to do for x equals 2. And it's 0 0.2097, apparently. You can do these on the calculator to get good at using the calculator. Um, but just believe me for now, okay? Um, apparently, the problem that x equals 3 would be 0 0.0617. All right, you're getting the idea. See, this is how we generate the values of the probability for our table, which we're going to do on this screen. Now, continuing on with this method, the following table can be constructed. Oh, look at that. Now, this this is back into the land of what we were doing for just the normal general case of um, just ordinary, non-descript, you know, no-name brand discrete variable distributions, okay? So we can do the same thing for the binomial, which is an example of that kind of distribution. So here it is. We've got these, and I've worked out all the rest of them for you. This one here is, is so small. It comes out to be 0 0.0000 to four decimal places. This one only just scraped in at 0 0.0001 when we had six rainy days. Now, guys, do you know how to work out the median? Now... I think you do, because what we learnt was to troll over from the left and find the value of x for which we get over the line in terms of a 0.5 probability. Well, you can see, in this case, it's just going to be 1. So when you get x is 1, this one, this one and this one gets us to point, what is it, uh, point seven something yeah so that's well and truly over 0.5 so therefore the median becomes the one which gets us over the line okay which is this one meaning the middle value if you like thou or she be yep see there's a probability that x equals zero plus the probability that x equals one gets us 0.7166 so you can see very, very plainly that the median yes because that's more than 0.5 the median is x being 1. Okay, x is 1 is the median value. See, it's easy as, isn't it? So don't be confused by that. Uh, if someone sort of throws that curved ball at you for uh, a binomial distribution, you can just revert back into, uh, you know, norm, uh, I don't mean, <laughs> I better not say normal, you know, ordinary discrete random variable distributions. Yes, and do it that way. No problem, guys. Now, what about C for you and me? The mode. Well, look, you can work out the mode now. You don't need me to tell you. Look, it's the most probable one. Da-da-da-da! It's x equals 1. You see how easy it is when we've got a nice little table of values. But we had to generate the table of values. That was the only difference for a binomial. But it's very easy to generate when you've got that wonderful formula that we were using on the previous screen. So, therefore, x is 1 is the mode. Oh, well... Now we're absolutely cooking along. What else we've got to do? Uh, standard deviation? No problem. We know the formula for that, don't we? We've got a nice little convenient formula. It's NP times 1 minus P, and we happen to know N is 7 and P is 0.15, so uh, we can work that out. It comes to 0.8925. That is the variance, of course. Now, don't make that mistake. That's the variance. We've got to get the standard deviation, which is the square root of that, right? And that comes to, to four decimal places, 0.9447. Jolly good show. All right, now what else? Now, we've just got to do E now. All right, so let's go over the screen to do that. We're trying to work out here, ladies and gentlemen, the probability that the number of rainy days falls within two standard deviations from the mean. That means either side of the mean, by the way. So let's work out that interval, okay, that interval of values of x. Now, it'll be a theoretical, it'll be a theoretical range or interval. You watch this. In fact, we get a bit of a weird result, but I'll explain that as we go. Now, we know that the mean is 1.05. We worked that out in part A. We also know that the standard deviation is 0.9447 uh, to four decimal places from part D. So let's just work out uh, our interval of mu plus or minus 2 sigma. So mu plus 2 sigma is 2.94, Having using these figures here. You get it, don't you? Yep. Yeah. 
So mu minus two sigma is, now look, look at this, this is really weird. We've got a negative value. Well, then you might throw your hands up in absolute shock and horror and say, oh no, Wolfman, you've made a mistake, you silly goat. Well, actually, I haven't really made a mistake. I can't find a mistake. It just means that because this particular binomial distribution is so skewed, um, the peak, the modal value and the median were where x equaled 1. So, you know, it's, it's really very, very skewed, this one. Because our probability was only 0.15, guys, that's why. So, therefore, if we're working out uh, mu plus or minus 2 sigma, it's quite conceivable that we could actually get a value in the negative. But that's just a theoretical uh, range, right? Don't worry, we're not going to be quoting negative values of the actual variable x. We just have to make sure that the variables, uh, the range of x values that we use have to be wholly contained within this interval from minus 0.84 up to and including 2.94. So we will just find the maximum interval of whole number values of x which are contextually okay, which fit uh, within this theoretical interval. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. You watch this. We need x to fall within that interval there, but of course x could only be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or 7. So we've got to find the maximum interval of x, The min in other words, the minimum value of x uh, and the maximum value of x so that the whole range is wholly contained within this interval, okay? Now, what that means is, yes, the, the closest interval of whole number x values which fall wholly within this range is, okay, now, taking this one here, minus 0.84, well, that's, okay, we can go for x equals 0. We've got a whole number value of x is 0. That's the closest one you can get to this one at the minimum end of the range, yes? And x being 2 is the closest you can get to this one at the maximum end of the range, if you know what I mean. Now, you couldn't pick 3 because 3 would be more than 2.94, wouldn't it? Yes, so therefore you've got to make sure that the actual range of values of x fits wholly within this envelope here defined by this theoretical construct here, okay? Mu plus or minus 2 sigma, okay? Am I getting through? Very good woohoo if I'm getting through. So x is allowed to go minimum value 0, maximum value 2 to fit in okay, to this interval, right, to fit into that and be wholly contained within that interval, yes, minimum zero, maximum two. So you see, we didn't end up with any negative x values, we just picked the nearest, uh, the nearest and dearest which fits in to this, this envelope here, right, that's what we're doing, guys, and that's what you do with these discrete variable distributions, okay, when you're working out these, um, you know, mu plus or minus two sigma kind of things, yes? Now, so now what we're going to do is we're going to work out the probability um, that is appropriate to this interval. So that would be the probability that x is naught plus the probability that x is 1 plus the probability that x is 2 and add them up and work out what the total probability is going to be. Okay, that uh, we're within the mu plus or minus two sigma interval, right? Okay, so it looks like 0 0.3206, which is when x is 0, the probability that x equals 0, plus 0 0.3960, which is the probability that x equals 1, plus uh, 0 0.2097, which is the probability that x equals 2, and what do we get? Oh my goodness, 0 0.9263 to four decimal places, no less. So, we can say that the probability that the number of rainy days falls within two standard deviations of the mean... Ladies and gentlemen, is 0.9263, and that fills us with glee. It certainly does. And you're a star. Of course you are a star. And you'll go far, but you will need to remember how to do these two kind of lesser, uh, lesser 
highlighted uh, little measures of center when you've got a, a binomial distribution, right? And they are the mode and the median. So what do you do again? Yes, you have to construct a table of uh, values, a distribution, a probability distribution, using that wonderful binomial formula for each individual uh, value of probability in that table, as I showed you earlier. All right, I won't uh, rattle on any more. Um, thank you for coming today. I hope you get some value out of that. And all the best, and we'll see you next time.